Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 64 for the year 2020, setting up the Hope Fund to support the youth projects and initiatives. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs shall issue the bylaw, including the organizational structure of the fund, its work system, and all matters necessary to enable it to achieve its goals and exercise its specialties. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a response cable from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, following His Majesty's cable congratulations on appointing Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah as Crown Prince. The Emir of Kuwait expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings and praised the historic and brotherly relations between the two countries. He expressed aspiration to further enhance these relations in all fields. His Highness wished His Majesty the King lasting good health and happiness and further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable congratulations from the representative of His Majesty the King from Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness thanked His Majesty for his directives to advance Bahrain's development movement in various fields and His Majesty's affirmation of the importance of giving Bahraini youth a pivotal role in the development process taking place in the kingdom. His Highness affirmed that His Majesty's speech carried many noble meanings and developments for the kingdom in various fields, including the youth field, which affirms the role of Bahraini youth in building the future of Bahrain. He stressed that the royal order to establish a fund to support youth projects and initiatives is a translation of His Majesty's visions to give Bahraini youth full confidence to participate in leading the development movements in the kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa on patronizing the opening of the third session of the fifth legislative term. The BDF Commander in Chief praised a keynote speech delivered by His Majesty the King, noting that it will be a roadmap for speeding up the recovery of the national economy, consolidating preemptive health security, food self sufficiency, digital transformation, and youth empowerment, in addition to diversifying investment in value added fields. He stressed that His Majesty the King's constant follow-up on citizens' needs through the interest in their health and safety contri contributes to alleviating the burden of the pandemic's impacts on them. The Commander-in-Chief prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Representatives Council Speaker Fawziya Zainal on the opening of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. Zainal extended thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Premier, expressing keenness on further cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to achieve citizens' aspirations and bring about more achievements. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also received a cable congratulations from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, on the occasion of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Saleh extended sincere congratulations to His Royal Highness the Premier, lauding his unlimited support to the Shura Council and keenness to boost cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and promote the democratic march in Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a response cable from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, following His Royal Highness's cable congratulations on appointing Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah as Crown Prince. The Emir of Kuwait expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his noble feelings, praised the deep rooted bilateral relations, and hoped for further development on these relations in all fields. His Highness wished His Royal Highness the Crown Prince lasting good health and happiness and further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely and Secretary General Dr. Yasser Al Nasser made the following statement. The cabinet praised His Majesty the King's address delivered during the inauguration of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils which highlighted the Kingdom's priorities and development goals and will serve as a roadmap for Team Bahrain to further enhance progress and development for all in the Kingdom in line with the vision of His Majesty the King. 
The cabinet welcomed the decision made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Council of Ministers, chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to raise the level of representation for the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council to be headed by the crown princes of the two countries. The cabinet praised the decision, which aims to further strengthen bilateral relations across all levels. The cabinet extended best wishes to His Highness Sheikh Mash'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, who was newly named Crown Prince of Kuwait by the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, wishing him success and serving Kuwait and its citizens. The cabinet expressed their wishes for the continued commitment to the ceasefire agreements between Azerbaijan and Armenia and the Nagorno-Karabakh region, and for political solution to be reached which resolves the conflict in a way that contributes to achieving security and peace in the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince issued directives to ministers and government agencies to expedite their responses to questions and requests received from the representatives and Shura Council's committees in order to further enhance cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. The cabinet reviewed the results of the performance of government agencies in the national system for suggestions and complaints to Wassel during the period from October 2019 to September 2020. The results showcased that 20 government agencies achieved best performance. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince emphasized the importance for all government entities to further strengthen the quality of their services and to respond to complaints in a timely manner. The cabinet adopted the 2020 population census in the Kingdom of Bahrain presented by the Minister of Interior. The cabinet approved the fifth national telecommunications plan which outlines the government's general policies and strategies regarding the telecommunications sector during the next three years which aims to enhance competition within the mobile telecommunications sector as well as to further develop the kingdom's digital economy. The cabinet approved the renaming of four industrial zones out of seven belonging to the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism after some of them were merged. The cabinet reviewed the Electricity and Water Authority's performance and efficiency regarding the production, transmission and distribution of electricity and water during the summer of 2020 during the unprecedented circumstances provided by COVID-19. The cabinet approved the Kingdom's accession to the Nagoya Protocol on access to genetic material and their fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from its use attached to the Convention of Biological Diversity. The protocol aims to regulate the process of obtaining genetic resources related to plant and animal biological diversity between providers and users of these resources. The cabinet approved the Kingdom's accession to the Minamata Convention on Mercury, which aims to protect human health and the environment. The Cabinet approved a proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives to increase health inspections for expatriate workers, which has already been enforced through the measures taken by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Labor and Social Development in this regard. The Cabinet discussed and took appropriate decisions regarding a number of proposals related to criminal cases and social media, fees prescribed for parents of students with disabilities in special rehabilitation centers that were suspended due to the global pandemic, doctors working temporary contracts and unemployed nurses. In the items of ministerial reports, the Cabinet noted the outcomes of the sixth meeting of the Committee of Labor Ministers in the GCC, submitted by the Minister of Labor and Social Development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Zainal, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh. His Royal Highness emphasized that in order to realize the objectives of the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King, collective efforts are required to entail further integration and determination by all in order to achieve national priorities. His Royal Highness commended the wide-ranging achievements of Team Bahrain comprised of the Executive Authority, Legislative Authority, the private sector, as well as citizens and residents, adding that these accomplishments serve as a platform to build on in order to meet the aspirations of the Kingdom and its citizens and secure further progress and development. He praised His Majesty the King's Royal Address at the inauguration of the third session of the fifth legislative term, noting that His Majesty's Address should be the basis for all work streams and serve as a roadmap to further in, for further initiative plans and development projects. His Royal Highness noted that an increase in the productive cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities is required in order to meet the aspirations of Bahraini citizens and progress the Kingdom's development. He stressed that Bahrain's democratic journey continues towards further prosperity for the kingdom and its citizens who will always remain in the heart of all development efforts.
His Royal Highness expressed his thanks to the Speaker and the Chairman and to the members of both councils for their roles in advancing the collaboration between the two authorities. He underlined the unprecedented challenges imposed by the global spread of COVID-19, noting that the Kingdom of Bahrain, through the solidarity of its people and their collective spirit, has turned these challenges into opportunities for further development across various sectors. He added that these efforts must continue with further efficiency and drive during the next phase of joint work between both authorities. The Speaker and the Chairman expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his support towards enhanced cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa awarded remotely the top 20 performing government agencies within the National Suggestion and Complaint System, Tawasal, for the year 2020. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to further strengthening the quality and performance of government services in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. He noted that the Kingdom continues to adopt programs and initiatives aimed at supporting innovation within government work streams in order to further enhance service delivery excellence to the benefit of citizens and residents. He emphasized the importance of serving excellence, excellence when providing government services, adding that Tawasal was launched to further expand and develop government efficiency and performance. His Royal Highness then congratulated the awarded and the 20 recipient government agencies with the 2020 Service Excellence Award, of which 13 had been previously awarded in 2019 and an additional seven entities added to this year's list. His Royal Highness commended each government agency for its excellent performance and efficient response with the Tawasal system. The 20 government agencies awarded are as follows. The Ministry of Interior through the Customs Affairs, the Southern, the Capital, the Northern Governorates, and the Information and E-Government Authority. The Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. The Ministry of Housing. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. Through the Municipal One-Stop Shop, the Southern and Area Municipality, and the Northern Area Municipality. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs the Central Bank of Bahrain, the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs, through the Electricity and Water Authority, the Bahrain Bourse, the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, the National Health Regulatory Authority, the Education and Training Quality Authority. A number of senior government officials attended the ceremony remotely to receive their awards and extended their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his continued support towards further enhancing government services within the Kingdom, noting that this reinforces service excellence, efficiency and development across all sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince received a cable congratulations from the Representatives Council Speaker Fozi Yazainan on the opening of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. Zainal extended thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, which affirms His Royal Highness's efforts in raising the Kingdom's status. She prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless the Kingdom with further progress and prosperity during the era of His Majesty the King, and wished His Royal Highness lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also received a cable congratulations from the Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh on the opening of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. As Saleh affirmed that His Royal Highness's support to the democratic and parliamentary experience in the Kingdom asserts the true support that stems from the national desire for the sustainability of a large reform project. He wished His Royal Highness lasting good health and happiness. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a cable congratulations to the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fozi Yezina. Her Royal Highness expressed sincere greetings and wishes to the Speaker and wished her further success in carrying out her national responsibilities. She also congratulated Zainal for the commencement of the third session of the fifth legislative term. Her Royal Highness prayed to Allah the Almighty to assist her representative their representatives towards further achievements and all that contributes to the process of comprehensive developments. She added that the speaker's speech has been well received and that it affirms the progress of Bahraini women as they strive to serve the nation. She thanked the Supreme Council for Women for setting role models for Bahraini women through its various efforts towards achieving gender equality, which made the Bahraini women own a success story thanks to the leadership of His Majesty the King and the ongoing support of the government. 
The commander of the National Guard, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, praised the speech of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, delivered during the opening ceremony of the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Highness said that the speech inspires further progress and prosperity through meeting challenges and building upon the national institutions. He added that His Majesty's vision and directors have had a significant influence on the successful Bahraini model as it works towards containing the pandemic. His Highness explained that His Majesty's speech is constantly call for national unity and inspire further progress, prosperity and development. The commander affirmed that people of Bahrain are known for their unity during hard times and that His Majesty's directors, which include the construction of a specialized hospital for infectious diseases and a fund to support the youth, have had a significant impact on the people's morale. He affirmed that His Majesty fully appreciates the sacrifices of the citizens and is keen on ensuring their well-being and prosperity. His Highness expressed gratitude for His Majesty's keen interest in security institutions, including the National Guard, which will remain as steadfast in protecting the country's prosperity, security, peace and stability. He finally prayed for the ongoing security for Bahrain's leadership and people. The Council of Representatives held its first procedural session chaired remotely by Speaker Fozia Zainab. Addressing the virtual session, she extended on behalf of all legislators thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for inaugurating the third session of the fifth legislative term. She praised His Majesty's keynote speech, which represents a roadmap identifying the priorities of parliamentary and national work to continue the march of achievements. She underlined the cooperation with the government and the Shura Council to continue strengthening the march of comprehensive national development for Bahrain and its people. She thanked the Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh and the Parliament Minister Ghanem bin Fadl Bainin for their cooperation. Al Bainin addressed the procedural session, praising the achievements of the Council during the previous two legislative sessions. The Shura Council held its first procedural session, presided over remotely by Chairman Ali Saleh. Al Saleh extended thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for patronizing the inaugural ceremony, hailing the royal care for the legislative authority. On behalf of the Shura Council members, he extended appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for attending the inauguration of the third session of the fifth legislative term, hailing their continuous support. He reiterated allegiance to the leadership, affirming keenness on respecting the constitution and laws in the country of the rule of law and institutions. Al Saleh hailed His Majesty the King's keynote speech at the inaugural session, describing the Royal Visionary Address as a blueprint for more development, progress and prosperous future. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, praised the speech delivered by His Majesty the King during the opening of the third session of the fifth legislative term, which reflects his wise vision, civilized approach, and insight to ensure a decent life for the Bahraini citizen and for the sake of a progressive and prosperous country. He described the speech of His Majesty as a comprehensive word that expressed His Majesty's belief in the important and effective role played by the legislative authority represented by the Shura and Representatives Councils and the reform and modernization process led by His Majesty with his wisdom and enlightening visions and keenness to continue to build on the national achievements made throughout the Comprehensive Development March. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that the speech of His Majesty the King is a roadmap that will be achieved for the interests of the nation and the citizens and to, to achieve the desired development goals of the kingdom. He praised the royal vision included in the royal speech and their importance in light of the current stage and its requirements and the royal directors that always prioritize the country and its citizens. The Health Minister, Faiq al Saleh, also hailed the keynote speech delivered by His Majesty the King. She praised the Royal Directors to establish a hospital and a center specializing in infectious diseases, which reflects His Majesty the King's keenness on health as a top priority for citizens and a core human right. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Ayyad, affirmed that the content of His Majesty's speech asserts His Majesty's direct interest in supporting the youth and developing their skills as they are real wealth of the kingdom. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 4,090 with 441 recoveries, 327 registered new cases and two deaths. 104 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 214 are contacts of active cases and 9 are travel related. The deceased were a 72-year-old female citizen and a 63-year-old male citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.